Let's go back to the Building Safety Act. Gateway two. Yeah. You, they, you won't be able to. And that's, yeah, exactly. You won't be able to make those changes unless you can justify it and record why you've changed it yeah. and the evidence. So that's the golden thread. Yeah. So <clears throat> there, there is a term used by um, Ian McKilvey, who's our chief exec, and he said, actually, what we need, we don't need modern methods of construction. We need modern methods of procurement. Yeah. And he is so right. So back to that 17% waste, it's because the information isn't provided in the first place. And it's because people go, it's a stud, isn't it? It's a board, isn't it? It's a screw, isn't it? Until they need the evidence behind it. That's right. It's fire stopping, isn't it? Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's putty pad, isn't it? It's a ablative bat, isn't it? But if you haven't got the right evidence, you know, there, 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 there are examples. I get calls every day about issues that happened, happened in sight. And a call that I had today was a decision that they should have made right at the beginning got made right at the end and will result in tens of thousands of pounds of remedial work. Yeah. Because they thought, actually, you know, maybe they thought we can get away with this. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Good enough is not good enough anymore. It's not good enough. It has to be evidence-based decisions yeah. and evidence which you can follow through. And You know, there's, there's, there's a lovely image, isn't there, at... Um, uh, if you've watched any of the Grenfell inquiries, and I can't remember the name of the barrister, and I should do, he's just so good, isn't he, and calm and so prepared, and he's got all of the questions, and he goes, tell me about, tell me how you did this, what was the decision mm. you did on this? And it is about that evidence. Yeah. What's, where's the body of evidence? Yeah. It's been able to evidence, yeah, whether it's a product's performance, uh, whether it's um, you know somebody's, somebody's competency, um, it is it, the, the whole golden thread is about it is about effectively uh, an evidence based audit trail. So the big concern that we've got. So bear in mind. So the, the building the building safety act is is a is a primary legislation. They'll use that legislation for other pieces of legislation yeah. that will sit behind it, mm -hmm. and that they, they will come. And there's a timeline of about eighteen months. A lot of the things are in place. The building safety regulator now can be appointed. Um, they will look at safety critical products in a lot more detail. What do they mean by safety critical? Um, and it's not just fire in those, those instances. Well, I think it's, it's, I mean, from our, for the, you know, for a lot of our members, it, it's life safety products will come under scrutiny. And I think there'll be a whole, you know, a whole separate um, system. Um, so, you know, anyone that's familiar with, say, third party certified products, um, you know, for instance, you know, anybody who wants to join the ASFP has to be a third-party certified company. So third third-party certification is more, Mike, isn't it? Than I've got here's my test evidence. Yeah, it, it's so yeah because there's a scheme and that's run by uh, a certifier. So uh, IFC, Warrington, UL, BM Trader, BRE, um, and and they run that scheme and they audit that scheme and they audit the people doing it. And 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 until I think until Grenfell, I think third-party certification. Was probably seen as a as, as a panacea. Mm. That, you know, got third party certification, done, and it goes back to this thing that you know certain product standards have a standard for the product spec, and some product standards. And I'm familiar. I, the reason why I'm, I'm sort of familiar with this is that the fire care industry has one. Is they have a second part to the standard, which is actually about the application and the design and the installation and the interfacing and fault finding and that yeah. and service and maintenance. But a lot of products don't have that. A lot of products just says it, perform, it has to perform to this. It has to perform 60 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes, integrity. Maybe it has to have EI. Maybe, in some cases, EW. I mean, who's, who's, heard, who's heard of the classification EW? Radiant mitigation. Radiance. The, the mitigation of energy at a distance from the non-fire site and face of the, the element. Yeah. Wow. You know, there's something to talk about. And also smoke control, if it's applicable. But um, quite often people don't... Um, People don't sort of people don't align those two those things together. They don't, they don't realise that we, there's a requirement to do that. We've just done a, a, a review with British standards. There's a workmanship standard for dry lining, uh, BS eight thousand part eight. Yes, it was written in ninety four, I think, and uh, we are going through the final stages of that as a review. And one of the things that the new title will be about the di design and construction of dry lining. 
So we've tried to encompass as many things in this as we can um, to ensure that it is installed as, as well. So it's not just about the test evidence, but the installation. I've got one concern, probably my biggest concern around the Building Safety Act at the moment, is that they've also introduced, no, they haven't introduced because it was always there, the Defective Premises Act. Yes. I think that goes back to the 90s as well. Yeah, and yeah, basically yeah. it says... If you've, if, if you've got a residential building and something is wrong in it, uh, you've got six years mm. to, to, to raise that. That's where there's sort of six-year liability period That's we right. talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then, then you can go back to the developers and bring that back. This act, in certain instances, will retrospectively go back 15 and 30 years. 30 years. I think Mark, uh, Michael Gove, the Right Honourable, Right Honourable yeah. Michael Gove did suggest that 30 years would be appropriate in some cases. What were you doing 30 years ago, mate? Me? Um, I lived in London and I sang for my supper. Did you? Yes. That's another story. It is a very long story and not one we could probably broadcast most so, of it. So, so the issue is when you, <laughs> when you start to look about records and what people are keeping of records, yeah. how on earth are we going to be able to, to, to do that? I've, I, 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 we're amongst friends, aren't we, Mike? Of course. All of, okay. our, all of our viewers are friends. Yeah. Here's my concern. Except the ones that don't like us, of course. Here's my concern. <laughs> So my concern is the uh, the in, in insurance company were, were hit with it. The PPI. Yeah. Um, I, I I I drove a diesel car. I had a Mercedes car. Yeah. At one stage, and people in the song, you drive a Mercedes car. Do you realise you know that you? Well, it was fine. It worked. You know. Yeah. But do you realise you could get compensation? Oh, for this? Yeah. Yeah. We had it with cladding. The yep. EWI forms. We get it to an extent with uh, with fire doors and fire door inspections where people are going into these jobs. Show me a job where you won't find there is something not quite right, okay? There is, there are, there is a period mm. where something, if it's clearly wrong, and we've all seen examples of that, that's wrong. Mm. But there are also instances, we think that's gonna come off the back of this, where we're gonna have a plethora of experts going into jobs and finding problems. Of course. Huge concern we've got for the industry. That's not to say that what's installed should not be right. That has to be the case. Fire safety is critical on this, but we are concerned that this is going to hit hit the industry over the next the next few. Yeah, years. and the question is right. You know, the, uh, how how what or how are these people qualified to make these judgments on back on, to competency? It's back to competency and evidence yeah. incompetency. Um, you know, I think, uh, and that is, I think that's one of the most important things. It's it's going to be the 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 not the competency of the product, but the performance of the product, and and certainly, certainly that is something that needs to be really dealt with, in the sense that in you know your British, British and European standards, you've got to you've got to know how to read a, a fire test report if it's not under a third party certified scheme. And the beauty of third party certified schemes, of course, is, is your Warrington, your IFC, take those three three folders of all your test reports yeah. and they align it to the standard you've, you've tested it to. And if they're happy that you are, you've passed and you know, in accordance with all the requirements, they issue you one certificate, one piece of paper that says, in relation to this product, in relation to this standard and these tests, we, Warrington, IFC, underwrite to say that they and know, we certify um, them that they're passed. There's factory con control processes as part of that, yeah. isn't there? So it's not just a one-off. It's not just a one-off. No, so it's not a one-off thing. So we can see the benefit in, in something like that. The, 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 the biggest issue that, that there is is the interface, the human interface between the material and, and, how, it's, yeah. and uh, it, how do we install it. Yeah. There aren't currently third-party installer schemes for all of the products that no. we've got out there. No, well, there's not third-party product schemes for all of the products, no. and there's less third-party installer schemes. And it goes back to that thing that we spoke about. It's the interfacing of the product or the system, dependent on the requirements that it's, it's been asked to achieve. So if we look at the risk, if we look at the granularity that there is at the moment, and, and, and people are... Um, you know they, they want to they want to feel comfortable with the decisions they're making and you look at what government is doing yeah. and the way that government is doing if we want to know whether there's a direction of travel I, th I think 
and I think we should be prepared for it, is third-party certification. Mm. Third-party certification uh, tied back to the installers, approved installer schemes, proper training schemes. You know, the, the MVQs that we have quite often are very generic. They are, yeah. And when you yeah. get into that into that granularity, uh, I think it's important that you have you have that there. So I think that's going to be important. The way in which we demonstrate that people are competent, I think, is important as well. So currently we've got the CSCS cards in their various guises. They don't necessarily show the level of training and everything no. goes behind it. No. That that's something that that I know we're working on and trying to trying to. I think to CSCS cards were created for the right reasons. To say that somebody is is you know has a level of knowledge in terms of their environment on a building site, yes. You know, don't fall down a hole. Don't trip over a wire. Yeah. Don't lean against a balustrade that's not there. Um, and then you know you, they added you know, things like you know, the, uh, first aid and health and safety and things, and they work in that principle. But I think it would be very difficult for CSCS cards to say that this person is competent in these 27 products and how you interface them and the knowledge of, the, of that system or the knowledge of this system uh, because there just isn't going to be the capacity. So, so we, we need the capacity on a card. Yeah. That if you're trading manufacturers one product, that, that's, that's shown. And that's them. actually where the slack, if you think about the, 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 the competency by virtue of products, it's the manufacturers of the, that have picked up the slack of that. You know, people like um, people like Rockwall or other manufacturers will train installers on their product yes. and their systems. Yeah. Now, what's the motivation for doing that? Well, without taking anything away from what they're doing, it yeah. isn't necessarily competency. It's a commercial decision because they want those installers to choose their product. You know, it's the reason why you advertise uh, Kellogg's cornflakes on a Saturday morning TV program because you want all the kids to go and ask their moms for Kellogg's cornflakes. It's, it's also about reputational risk. And it is about. I agree, but th because there is not a knowledge, there is not a competency chain to say that you know I've attended a CPD at this company or I've attended a two day training at that company. It goes back to that. It, it's not. It's not evidence based. No. So then you need. Then you and need there's the no experience. mechanism to support that training. Yeah, it's the experience. Yeah, it's putting all of that information in in, in, in one place. Raising the bar started the, this process. There's another series of reports from the working groups, the twelve working groups, uh, that will, will be coming out shortly. But remember as well, Mike. The and, and you mentioned to me this before we we you know before we sat down. Um, working group thirteen became the working group that developed the uh, code for construction product information. Yes. That's that they're, they're, they're going through trials at the moment with that. And it's not just about having evidence that your product has tested to that, but actually that you've got a competent workforce yeah. from marketing yeah. through to sales yeah. that backs that up. I, I, it, there are some really good things that have come out of this. We just we just need to see them coming, and we we need to see them sort of as they come through. There's there's um there's a quote I've got here, um, Mike uh, Andy Andy Webster. I can't take credit for it. Andy Webster came up with it, but I I, I use it at every opportunity because they say it's about culture change. Culture change, they say, is always the barrier. Yeah. I've always done it this way. Why yeah. should I change? Da 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 da. da. And then they they start to talk about early adopters groups and 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 how that works and there are various curves that show you need the early adopters for the other people to go okay so I'm I'm an early adopter but he's done it first I want somebody to do it first. What Andy said is no one will agree to change until the risk of staying the same is greater than the risk of changing. Yeah. So no one will will agree to change until the risk of staying the same is greater than the risk of changing. We are at that point. The Building Safety Act, the the risk is, you do it wrong, you're going to jail now. There's no yeah. doubt about it. The legislation puts that t term in th terms of responsibility. If it's wrong and you've done it wrong, you're going to jail. Yeah, because and it, the reason can't hide behind corporate. And I think the reason, yeah, people, it, it, when these things happen, people say, you know, there needs to be a public inquiry. Uh, I think what a lot of people don't realise is, is the reason why there's public inquiry is that there's actually no legal mechanism to do it any other way because the, 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 there's nothing on statute to, to cope with that particular event. 
Now, there will be with the Building Safety Act because it is now on statute yes. and, it, and, and it contains a lot of the elements that you know they've had to cover in, in, in the Grenfell disaster. So, you know, is there likely to be... Uh, and I think the other thing is, is, is that we've seen a step change in attitude and that, you know, what you've just said is correct, but there has been a step change in attitude. Uh, a lot of people, you know, we deal with now and our members, it's not a question of if there is a fire in a building, but when. And as soon as you change if to when, yeah. your attitude towards what you do changes because you're assuming at some point there will be a fire and therefore you need to source the right product, do the job properly and, and make sure that it's correct. Um, but I, I do, I think it's important to sort of emphasise that now this bill is live, or now this act is live, there is a a legal recourse, a criminal legal resource, which uh, which wasn't there before. Yeah. Hence, why it was a public inquiry and not, you know, straight to the old Bailey per se. Um, uh, and you know, heaven forbid we ever have another Grenfell. But unfortunately, you and I are old enough to know that the, you know, these, these everything that we do is it results. And Niall's much better at this than I am. But Summerland. Mm. on the, the Isle of Man yes. and that, the impact yeah. that had on yeah, yeah. ceilings and reaction to fire there was yeah. the Woolworths fire there was yeah. the King's Cross fire Ronan Point yes now Ronan Point changed what we were doing in terms of you can't just mess around with gas no you have to be gas safe mm. in my ideal world a firewall has to be installed by somebody who is competent in, the, in that market yeah whether that yeah. change will come or anything else will change I had um so one of, the, one of the pieces I always rolled out when we talked about building rigs, and I always said this with confidence, the first building regulation, 1666, after the Great Fire, don't put straw on the roof anymore. Exactly. And actually, yeah. Jeff Wilkinson told me yesterday, no, 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 there's an earlier one, and it's, it, it, he, it's, it's quoted from the old Bible. And if you build a flat roof put a handrail on it so people don't fall down. I'll get a copy of it to you. It's, it was the... It just complete, <laughs> So, you know, all of these things that, come out Is of, that the uh, AB, uh, ABM? Access it, to it, use it will be, yeah, buildings? K. Yeah. No, it'll be K. Oh, K, that's right. It'll, it'll be, be K. K. Yes, yeah. it will be AB, yes, it will be ABK. Yes. Yeah, it's all about... Sort of Stair treads and handrails and projections into... Yes, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, didn't use that one a lot, but yeah. I think I did. Uh, I've got a copy of it somewhere propping up the bed. Um, so, uh, and in terms of the, the dry lining systems, uh, I think it's an interesting view that effectively what what you're saying and what the FIS is saying is that uh, a non-load bearing dry lined element should not be considered just to be a series of products sitting on a pallet that somebody throws up. Uh, and the reason why I say somebody throws it up is that we we do have there's an attitude about the passive fire industry and certainly you know, certainly towards your in, your sector as well is that if it wasn't one of the more complicated trades so to speak then anybody could do it um, you know you, you have this thing that get the, when that guy's finished sweeping up give him a mastic gun and get him to go and fill some of those holes yeah the challenge we have is is to professionalise our respective industries. And the only way we're going to professionalise it is if we create those barriers to entry for just anybody by keep keeping you know, setting a series of bars that people have to achieve yeah. getting over. And not only that, but evidencing the fact that they've got over them and being able to evidence that on a continuous it's, it's, basis. It's slightly to do with gas safe now. It's yeah. the same type of thing. It, 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 it struck me in one of the conversations that I was having with Andy that, that we spend so much time considering the, the, the fire stopping, the linear fire seals, the penetrations, yeah. the intumescent, which makes up about 6-7% of the wall itself. So that 90 plus percent of yeah. the wall is the firewall. Yeah. And we've really got to start thinking about it in that terms. Mm. If, 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 if we're going to get this right, and deal with all of the things like like the defective premises act and and and, and make sure that that people are, are safe and feel safe yeah. i think is important as well yeah i think they do have to feel safe and of course one of the like all of these things there's generally a body politic somewhere in it and the the top of the body politic to a certain level to a certain degree with us and you could argue maybe it's somewhere further up the sort of design and construction 
uh, chain. But certainly for a lot of our members, the, the tier ones, tier twos are the top of the body politic. And of course their big problem is, uh, and they can't, they're not going to be able to, they can't mitigate what is already there, but they can certainly look to start to mitigate it for future, is the legacy issue. There's they a are, of, um, I've, I've, I've actually I've been really impressed with the, the group that, that, that we worked with. They are bringing in subject matter experts. Yeah. They're bringing them in in, in house. They're 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 not relying on. Um, I think part of the problem with relying on somebody externally sometimes, uh, and it's, especially if they're allied to a manufacturer, yeah, is they can apply commercial pressure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. When it's within, and the the people within are saying, no, this has to be done in this way, and actually we've flagged up there's a risk here. I think I think they are definitely far more engaged, which I think is a really good thing. Yeah, and I, and I think you know, and I know they're still in existence. Uh, their members are a rare breed, but uh, you know, bring the clerks of works back. Yeah, yeah. Where are we going to get them from? Well, we have to train them yeah. because, of course, there's a succession issue, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. You know, um, but they're a rare beast these days yeah, on are. you know a lot of sites, and uh, clerks of works are there to make sure that. You know, the building is constructed in, in, in line it's, with its, it's design. The inspection. And, I, and the inspection of it, yeah. I, I saw a tweet this morning, um, and it was it was a whole series of buildings, apartments, I think, and they had all of these, they were like post-it notes, but they weren't post-it notes. Somebody had screwed these plywood pieces to say, this is wrong, this is this is wrong, this is wrong. But you know, how has it got to that stage? Mm. How did it get to the stage where it was only inspected after the fact? Yeah. Well, actually, you know, you need to inspect all of the processes all yeah. of the way through. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can't you can't inspect dry lining when it's finished because you've no. got no idea how it's been built and whether the the studs are on the right centres, the right studs have been used, the right flat strappers you've been reused, how you've dealt with 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 the uh, uh, deflection heads and mouse holes and and everything else. It has to be it has to be that process. That has to be. A so process. I was surprised yeah. by that yesterday. So yes, Clark of Works people that really understand it the other the other thing that um, which is important is benchmarking yeah so benchmarking both in terms of, of, of having a, a finished piece that shows the quality mm. but you know we, we, we were talking about builders work holes earlier on if somebody isn't shown how to build that that lining and line it out and where the plasterboards will be they'll do it as they did it on the last job yeah because that was different because that's experience equals a behavior because so you their need, experience was the last job yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not a perfect world. Um, I think it's changed enormously over the last uh, five years. Mm. There's still more change to come. Um, so tell us about sort of what this roadmap looks like in terms of getting the getting the seed change of consideration towards dry lining walls, a white pallet of this, box of that box of this into a system because of course people are familiar with systems people are familiar with systems with as we say a door set yeah. possibly a fire curtain set shutters dampers things that are a, a finished article yeah. so you know you buy a new car yeah. that is a car set because yeah. it's got everything on it yeah. if they if you turned up to pick your car up and there was no wheels on it and the windows were missing you go where's where's my wheels in the wind ah well that's a car assembly yeah. you've got to fit your own windows and doors and they're in that box over yeah. there yeah. Uh, you go, oh, I'm not qualified to fit windows in a or, car or e even if you put the wrong wheels on how it affects the handling yeah, of the exactly. car yeah exactly so so, all of that. so people are familiar with sets and, and and they're familiar with the fact that there are products and components yeah so very much you know the pallet of dry lining pallet of mastic pallet of this da -da, yeah. da -da, all the things that make up this set yes. we're talking about i think a lot of people watching this would say well they're 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 and i don't use the word i don't use the word unjustly but are just component. They're just products, yeah. and I use those products every yeah. day. Well, it's like half a fire rated plasterboard. Yeah, it's common. It's there, and in in, in, so we need you know we need to change that. Yeah. So I think the first part about that is is firewall. Let's get the word firewall into 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 it, it being used, and then understand that that firewall itself is imperfect, and then look, let's look at all of these things that go through it. Yeah. So um, one of the first things that we'll do when we sit down is we'll start to map out how, what what affects the performance of that firewall. Yeah. So it will be what perforates it, it will be what it interfaces with, 
um, and the application as well. Mm. So if you've got a 50 mil stud, single layer of board, but I'm going to build this five and a half meters high, yeah, clearly wrong. Yeah. So there's a lot of education that we've we've got to do around that. I think the key to it is arming people with the questions. Mm. I don't think you can arm arm people with all of the answers, but you need to the designers themselves. They won't have that depth of knowledge. They are asking for information now. What other information do they need to ask? For? What do they need to look for? If we can arm, if we can provide them with that sort of a process to make sure that they check, and then what to look for. There is a... Um, you often hear people saying, have you got a certificate for that? Yeah. When they actually don't know what they're asking. Yeah, yeah, for. What, what, what do you want? Yeah. What's this, what they mean by a certificate is they want to see a test report. Yeah. No, in fact, they don't even ask for a test report some of the time. They want a bit of paper that says, this product does this, mm. and they see that as a certificate. There's no such thing again, no. which... No, you know, isn't. unless you're third party certified, there is no such thing as a certificate. Yep. So that's education. So what is it that they need to understand? You know, it comes back to the, the, this this here, the the process that we put in here, and the nine golden rules that were set against the RIBA plan of work. I think gives people a process that they can start to work to. So it may be that what we we end up with will be something like this with that process uh, allied to it. I don't know. At the moment, I've got questions. Yeah. I'm not the only one with questions. Of course. Yeah. It's, and, and that's where you get the collective. When you get a group of like-minded people together, all pointing in the same way, that's when you get stuff done. So um, if you can invite me back in, in about a year's time, I'd be delighted to tell you how we well, get done. Well, uh, Joe Sealy, you, you're welcome on the ICFP sofa anytime. Thank um, you. It's uh, nice. Anytime you like. Um, the, the, we do have a... The, the sofa is becoming in, in demand quite a lot as the popularity of these uh, these these go up. And uh, we, we, we do have a varied um, uh, level of guests, really. We had uh, a lady in uh, the other day from uh, Women into Construction. Yeah. Uh, and we were talking to her about how we can help our members improve their inclusion and retention and closing the gender pay gap. Uh, we've had a distributor, an ICP member distributor in recently. Uh, we did a, a podcast on uh, for a gentleman that were, is one of our members that comes from the fire rated glazing sector, which is a sector that we're you know engaging with more because fire is becoming more complicated. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're always welcome, Joe. Uh, did, you know, to, to the sofa and um, and to drink out of one of the um, yeah. much sought after ASFP TV mugs, which we were making sure Joe doesn't take home yeah, with, yeah. Uh, when he goes because uh, they uh, they are. Uh, I think we've only got twelve at the moment. Uh, we may start putting them on the website for sale uh, if if the popularity of them see, grows. If, if you much get one more. on eBay, yeah, they, we'll you, see, you, we'll start to see, we'll sell them for a pound and we'll start seeing them on eBay for a tenner. Uh, it's uh, it's the way of the world um so is there anything else before we uh, wrap up is there anything else you uh, want to uh, tell people is, uh, is there anything else coming up from the fis is there any of the guidance documents is there any of the events so for you? The, the, there is mike the um we've got this series of specifiers guides mm. um which have again you know the same approach that you do you get the, the members along to, to to work these th things through so we've got one on ceilings We've got one on dry lining, one on partitioning, which is different. That includes it's partitioning plus. the new one. Is that the latest one? Partitioning is the one that came out, yeah, yeah. In, um, last last week. Um, uh, because that's my background as well. I thought oh, this will be easy. Yeah. And then actually, you, you you get into the granularity of it as well. And you realise. Yeah. Because specification now, it's it's not just about writing the uh, a, a specification. It's actually understanding the needs. So, sustainability is a big part of it yep. now. Having EPDs, understanding where the products come, what's the embodied carbon. With partitioning, the big, the big change that's happening in this market is flexibility. Mm. So we've all come back from COVID and people are wanting more out of their space. Yep. They want to be able to work in different ways and they also want the flexibility. So flexibility within the space is important. So relocatable partitioning rather than demountable partitioning okay. is, is the big drive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, government have helped recently. They've given us tax incentives to use 
uh, a relocatable product. And then there's a next generation of petitioning which is being developed, which are pods. Now we think about bathroom pods and yep. you know, that, that type of thing. Yep. But actually these are, uh, they, they are um, fairly, a, anything from a, a telephone kiosk type pod all the way through to a meeting room that you can get 12 or 15 people in yeah. and that you can reconfigure. Mm. So that's, that's the next generation that's coming in. Um, there is an operable wall market which is part of the petitions as well. Mm. Um, the specification of an operable wall is totally different to a petition because all of the weight is being hung from the socket above. Yeah, so these are these things, if you go to your to a typical hotel, say to a wedding or something, they may have a very big space, but they can actually slide these big wall sections along the they track can. on the top and the bottom, and lock them in, and you can turn one very big space into three separate spaces so, by using them. The acoustic performance of them, and, and yeah, and actually, really if you look cool. at them, they're actually pretty thick, aren't they? Some yeah. are, some are, yeah. Some are. We, um, uh, we we're trying to help our members at the moment by verifying data. Um, we've so back to our Mercedes again. Yeah. Who would believe that somebody won't quite tell the truth? Uh, you know, whatever it is, we had this in the operable wall market. Yeah. If you do an acoustic test on a door you have to operate it five times before you do the test to show that it's an open, to show that it's an opening to show element. That it's yeah, yeah it's not being gummed up sealed up exactly because that would increase yeah. the performance of course it? it would yeah we had the same in the fire curtain industry you have to Did do you? 25 cycles on the furnace before you turn the furnace on to show that it's a fully operational system and not something that's been so it's the same thing gummed up with a load of fire so mastic guess what they didn't do that they were gumming them up. Oh, they were gumming them up. Okay. They were gumming them up. Yeah. So um, quite often these were done at the end of the test to say, if our seals were better, what could we achieve? Yeah. So let's cork the joints and do that. And some people were using that evidence as part of the test evidence. Now that came unstuck, um, uh, especially on the schools, when you then have to do, because the schools, they do site tests. It's mm -hmm. not just reliant on a, a single... RW figure and they were failing awfully because because of this so we have an acoustic verification scheme that deals with that and the same with petitioning you know people chase a number so actually specifying petitioning and petitioning is changing is, is a big part of, 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 of what we're doing the other big area for us is the skill shortage yeah so um, every year People either retire or take a change of career. Um, and so you need a new input to come yeah. in. Yeah. So you need about 3,000 new people coming into the market every year. The general construction dry industry. No, this is just, oh, dry just dry lining. Just dry lining. Okay, wow. Just coming to dry lining, you need about 3,000 okay. just to come into the sector. There is always a fallout. So you need to train 4,000. You need to give them a, a chance to do that. That's the equivalent of about four schools, senior schools. Yeah, schools. four reasonably sized senior schools, yeah, yeah. Every year. Yeah. What's happened over the last five years is we've decided to exit the European Union mm -hmm. and the economy has changed and a lot of the labour that we had here came from Europe. That's gone back. Yeah. And they're not coming back. Mm. You know, for all the reasons they're generally not coming back. That has changed the dynamics and has pretty much doubled the number that we need to get in yeah. to about 8,000 a year. And I suppose it's put the cost of that resource up for the employer as well, hasn't it? Because it has it's put good, supply it's, and demand. It's a, it's a rare commodity. You know, yeah. a, a dry liner can earn... A dry liner can earn 250 to £350 pounds a day. That's a huge amount of money. Mm. They're skilled, they're hardworking, they're working in different conditions. Part of the problem that we have is that we're not attracting, uh, we're not attracting people from school into construction. No, it's a it's a big issue that we have. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is the way in which we sell construction. You know, if you, you know, I remember being at school and the, the teachers would say, "So, um, Greg, what are you going to do?" I'm going to be a dentist. Mm. Oh, fantastic. And Jane, what are you going to be? I'm going to be an accountant. And somebody else is going to be a doctor. And somebody, mm. and I said, what are you going to do, Jane? Don't know, miss. Nice construction college down the road. 
be good for you. Yeah. And that's what happens. It's, yeah. We, we, you know, we're not all academic. No. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not as, as academic as, as some people that, that are there. So you, you wander into that. Seventy percent of the money we spend on training in in, in colleges construction is wasted because mm. you only get about thirty percent out. Mm. So that's a big issue. But attracting people, I've had a really good career in in the fit out sector. I came to it from a completely different sector. Uh, when I was 21, so I've had a long time doing this. It offers people a great opportunity to get into construction. You can sell, you can design, mm. you can administer, you can project manage, you can install, you can run your own company. You can do the techie stuff, like you, can like you all of the techie stuff. Do all the well. techie stuff as that well. That experience that, that comes up. Yeah, yeah. So, skills is another big part of of what we've got to do and, and, and educate people in skills. The Building Safety Bill is clearly something that all the trade associations have got to get their, their heads around oh, yeah. and how do, we, how do we deal with that and yeah. how do, how do we, 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 we move that on. We've got problems at the moment where we've moved from uh, CE marking, so this was the some people thought it was Chinese export at first. Chinese export? Yeah. Well, there may be some Chinese export products that has a CE mark on it, but I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> yeah, well, believe the CE mark on it if it's... So, uh, <laughs> conformity European, that's where CE marking yeah. came from. Yeah. So, we're going to have our own mark, UK CA mark. Um, if you've got a product, you have to have that tested in the UK now. Yep. You have to have a... Um, and I, I still can't get my head around all the new terms... But you have to have what was was um, a, a, a nominated uh, body that did all of that work for you and produced your declaration of performance. That's all going to be done in the UK. Yeah. There is, um, we, you'll never, we're never going to get them all through in January. No. By January. Well, it's, it was postponed a year already, wasn't it? So it's likely to happen again. But yeah. there's hidden stuff. So if you've got a motor in something, that's currently CE marked. Mm. That's got to be CA marked, yeah. UK CA marked. Yeah. If you're exporting to Northern Ireland, you've got to have it UK and I marked. If you're exporting back into Europe, you've got to have it CE marked. Yeah. But that test evidence has got to come from Europe. Yeah, it's not transferable, is it? So we've got we've got a, a, a number of challenges to do. So trade associations, what are we here to do? I think the trade associations thirty years ago were they did a couple of golf and a couple of award ceremonies and gave you a badge i think we've moved miles from that now yeah yeah very we much are so. we yeah. spend time looking at the horizon trying to work out where the light's coming mm. trying to understand where those issues are that are coming where the eyes and ears the contractors these days the majority of them are smes and micros the majority of the people so you look at the shard or anything else that's been built they will be smes and micros their job quite often when they get into the into office on Mondays to get to Friday. Yeah. I've got to get these materials on site, I've got to get that estimate out, I've got to get these bills out, I've got to chase that invoice, I've got to recruit somebody for that. It's Friday. And they do it all again on Monday. Yeah. So our 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 role is is, is is to be their eyes and ears, to understand where these problems are and what can we do collectively to to, to come in. So actually Sitting here on the ASFP sofa, which is very comfortable, is a great opportunity actually to show the trade associations working together for, for, the, for the benefit of, of the whole of the, the industry, but particularly our, our members. Is, is I think this is a great example of, of us doing that. Mm, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And a great example of actually telling people about what's going on is, is ASFP TV, because yeah. um, one of the things that we were... We found out when we first started looking at this was, you know, a lot of a lot of members of trade associations. I mean, it's different varying levels of people why people join. Some people join for the badge and don't really engage much. Some people, in, you know, engage a little, and some people, you know, get involved because they want to, you know, influence something in a in a more positive yeah. uh, way. Um, but the one thing, the sort of feedback that we got was that you know you do great things ASFP, but we never hear about it. So we resolve that by actually telling them, you know, if somebody, if a pin drops now, uh, everybody hears about it. Uh, and I think that's that in itself is 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 the right thing to do because, of course, 
you know, what, one of the reasons why things like Grenfell happen is, is that there was a lack of communication and a lack of understanding and a lack of engagement. And I think the more you engage and the more you communicate, the more people become aware. And if people are aware, they're likely to make different decisions. It's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. Because we well, we, no, actually, me and Max find it quite easy. What we do is we sit here and invite people to come along and talk to us, and uh, and this is generally the net result. So uh, no, no, we find it we find it dead easy. <laughs> no, I mean actually, it is hard because uh, um, you, you've got to make sure the subject matters, you know, right and it's relevant, and. Uh, the hardest part, I suppose, is is um, is growing that engagement. Yeah, and we've been very lucky so far that the numbers are, the numbers keep growing. Uh, it, it is about that engagement, isn't it? Yeah. You know, one of the things that I, that I say to people when they join and, and when I talk is, engage with us. The more you engage, the more you'll find out. You'll get more. I, I think, and that's a message to anybody who's thinking about joining a trade association. You get out what you put in. Absolutely. If if you join just to have a bad a sticker on the back door of your van. Yeah. Which you know maybe for the right reasons. You know I know it's been a while since I've gone through a pre-start bundle with a main contractor in a porter cabin, but you know the the list of things you needed to take into that pre-start meeting just got bigger and bigger and bigger, and the number of stickers on the back of your van got more yeah. and more and more. Um, you know I think it's uh, it was a it was a, a a way of not passing on risk from the main to the subcontractor but but the main contractors showing greater levels of due diligence but it's it's what i call castle engineering you know if you want to make a castle better but you don't have the means to do it you just make the walls taller and thicker you're still using blocks of granite mm. and you're still using a drawbridge made of oak uh, it needs significant step change. Get away from the fact that you you reinforce something by just adding more to it. And certainly, if you talk to any specialist subby, their pre-start bundle these days, you know, you need two people to carry it in into the door. And the, and the contractors have got so much to try and look at, haven't they? Yeah, they 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 are they're in a very difficult. You know, their price is important. Yeah, their delivery is important. And all of the, the accreditation systems that they go through as well is important. So, you know, you said, what else we're looking for? That's another thing that's on the list, is we, we, we have a vetting process with our members, our contractors. Mm. And we're looking that, uh, at that again to, to make it better for them. And uh, at the same time, something which is tangible to, to offer to the main contractors too. Yeah. Well, it's been lovely seeing you, Joe. Uh, okay. You are actually from in the in the world of ASFP the uh, the award winning Joe Sealer. Well, from from twenty twenty one. If anybody saw that, uh, of course the awards are coming up again uh, for ASFP later this year. I think you've got your awards soon, haven't you? Have we have. We, we we're in London in in June. Our contractors yep. awards, um, which will be a it, it's a, it, they're lovely these awards because they're a really good opportunity to do this. Aren't yeah, they? yeah, to network and talk yeah. to people. So, uh, so the award-winning Joe Celia, uh, mm -hmm. thank you for your time. Uh, it's, it was, uh, I, if anybody's interested, by the way, in en engaging on this particular subject, so effectively dry lining wall being now considered or should be considered as a system, something similar to a door set, uh, fire curtain or shutter, uh, then contact us or, or you can actually contact the, the, the FIS. Uh, they're in Alton in Solihull, Hall, uh, and, uh, which is not a million miles away from where we're sitting now. Uh, so you can contact them and they'll they'll engage with you mm. on that basis. But clearly, step change is coming. Uh, there's a whole reason why uh, it is coming. Uh, for those of you who keep an eye on the news, you'll know why it's coming. Uh, but this is certainly an interesting uh, conversation point um, because it is a step change away from considering a, 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 a collective of um, individual products actually um, turning themselves, well, not turning themselves, but becoming a system and being recognised and considered as such. Uh, I'm, I'm sure this is not the first or the last of these particular considerations on these types of uh, problems. Um, so, Joe, thanks very much. Thank nice you. to see you. And uh, if anybody ever want to get in touch, and Max, you'll have to fit it in, uh, drop us a note, and we'll see you soon. Thank you very much.